who have normal glucose tolerance, and these are people who are obese and have normal glucose tolerance, and his a group that is uh, more obese. And you can see that as you have visceral fat, these two people have the same amount of obesity, but these people don't have as much visceral fat as these people. Uh, and you can see the difference. This is the visceral fat area. Uh, if uh, the visceral fat area is greater, you require a lot more insulin to do the job of putting away the glucose. So this shows very clearly that visceral fat is detrimental and can lead to exhaustion of the beta cell. Now, the other player in this uh, besides glucose and insulin is, is fat and free fatty acids. And uh, someone with an increased visceral adipose tissue mass tends to put out, uh, have a much higher free fatty acid flux. As a result, the liver is inundated with fatty acids. They put out more v VLDL uh, triglycerides and this lipidemia tends to occur in these people. Uh, what we have with regard to adipose tissue is that because adipose tissue is also resistant to insulin, even though the insulin level goes up, there's increased lipolysis. In other words, the adipose tissue can't inhibit release of fatty acids from the depots in the adipose. So you have increased fatty acid mobilization increased levels of fatty acids circulating. And muscle responds to that by switching from a glucose fuel to a free fatty acid fuel. Uh, your skeletal muscle is like a Volkswagen that can, has two tanks, and one is a tank of alcohol and the other is a tank of gasoline. And according to the level of the fuel in the tank, it can switch from running the car in gasoline or running the car in alcohol. Same thing with your skeletal muscle. According to the molar ratio of glucose to fatty acids, the muscle switches from glucose to fatty acids. So if fatty acids are high, the muscle will begin oxidizing fatty acid and essentially uh, inhibiting use of glucose. Uh, in the liver, fatty acid is a powerful um, signal for increased oxidation. And increased liver fatty acid oxidation is a powerful uh, marker for increased gluconeogenesis by the liver. So at the time that the muscle stops using glucose, the liver starts putting out more glucose. And the net effect is you get a hyperglycemic effect on the individual. So free fatty acid flux is very important in the sense that as oxidation of fatty acids by the liver and muscle occurs and gets greater, there's a greater glucose output by the liver, less glucose utilization by muscle, and a hyperglycemic effect on the individual. You can see this here from this study that was done by Michael Jensen, who's at the Mayo Clinic. You have, a, he measured free fatty acid turnover rate and hepatic glucose production. This is the FFA concentration. These are normal white people. These are two groups of obese people, these with uh, subcutaneous obesity.